Welcome everybody, it's Scott with BikeRide.com and today we have a fun bike, the Aviton Adventure, here in the testing slot and we're gonna have some serious fun. Now this is a bike I heard a lot about, so it's some big boots to fill. People say that they love it and Aventon has put out some very specific numbers on what this thing can do and how far it can go on one charge of that 720 watt hour battery. Well I know that I'm up for some adventure and I've got the perfect test. I have a monster 22 mile commute. Will the bike take me the distance or leave me stranded calling for a ride home? And hey, if it can go 22 miles, why not double that? Stick around and watch and see me do a monster 50 mile range test and see if I end up walking. Plus a lot of stuff can go wrong on a 50 mile test, so stick around for some of that too. Now let's go ride some bikes. So really quickly, before we put this thing through its paces, what is the Aventon Adventure? Well, the Adventure was, at the time of its release, Aventon's most ambitious design to date. It was the first fat tire, full-size e-bike the company had created. And it's billed as a rugged, hardtail e-bike designed to transport recreational riders over a variety of terrain. Packing a powerful 750 watt Buffung rear hub motor to power you up to 28 mile per hour, which is the top speed. And we've got some great top speed tests coming up later. And it's combined with an eight speed drivetrain and some large four inch tires to soak up those bumps. And look, the name really spells adventure minus the D and the brand has brought a worthy package for us to test. So everything appears well built with a nicely thought out set of components, including some nice contact points. The adventure is big though. At 73 pounds, it's tough to lift onto a rack and can only be supported by those rated for heavy e-bikes. But if big looks and weight are backed up by big performance, a few pounds won't be a deal breaker. So let's take a look at the pro and con and see how they stack up. So let's start off with the pros. The first pro is that we have a quality build at every level. The Adventure is nicely built bike and it shows in every detail. Now the frame is beautiful with a nice paint job and really clean welds. That's coupled with a pleasant modern geometry. It's really a great looking unit and it feels rugged and capable underfoot. The wonderfully integrated battery is removed to the side, which is just so easy. And the contact points and components are carefully chosen. Really, everything blends seamlessly together. The bike feels great when you're riding it and the grips, pedals, and seat are all very comfortable. It's something that's rather rare right out of the box that these items feel really pleasant. Now the display is also impressive, being full color with lots of features and settings. If you wanna feel like you're getting your money's worth, the Aventon really lives up to expectations. It's a very modern feeling bike that would be appealing to users who are accustomed to some higher end recreational types of bikes. Now, when you're looking at the second pro here, we've got really great performance. Plain and simple, the Adventure is a blast to ride. And the Buffung motor is the same as we've seen on some other units, but with this controller in tune, the Adventure is just a wonderfully fun motor and a fun bike. So the bike is quick and responsive. It's easily able to power you up really any incline that you're gonna run into, and it can zoom you up to that 28 mile an hour top limit. It's a great recreational bike that really lives up to the name and it lives up to the brand's claims. Now the bike is also stable at speed and fast to accelerate. So when you combine that with the comfortable riding stance, we found that the bike really performed well as a commuter on 20 plus mile rides over pavement. So really in any open space, this bike is a great option for you to be riding with. For our third pro, we've got a great full color display and it comes with an app. So the display alone is a great addition to the bike. It's really easy to see and the control pad is pleasant to use and it's really nicely shaped. 
So the fact that it's full color and backlit really sets it apart from other units. And the brand has focused on a lot of the small details, like showing the battery as a percentage rather than just four to five bars. And they really add to the riding experience. The display can also show you some really cool info. Like it can show you how much carbon you've saved and how many trees that equals. So it's kind of a novelty item, but it's a fun feature that also translate over to the app. So you can brag to all your friends. Now, when you link up to the phone app via Bluetooth, it also packs some other great functionality, like extra features and the ability to unlock the tuning of the bike and turn it into a class three, which is capable of 28 miles per hour. So the app is very functional as it allows you to track and plan your rides, interact with other users, and also see all the information from your adventure display right on your device. So you can even control the lights and the settings of the bike from the app. It was really easy to use, it was easy to pair with the phone, and I love the extra ability that you can change the speed limit on the bike. So that was really a nice extra plus from us. So now we have to move on to the cons. The first con that we've got here is this is a heavy bike with large tires. And there's no denying that the Aventon is a highly capable bike, but it also packs some serious weight and a large set of tires. And it comes in at around 75 pounds with a four inch tire. So it's heavy and it really limits the options for mobility both on and off a vehicle. It's not easy to lift up solo, so maneuvering it up more than a couple of stairs is gonna be pretty tough. And you're gonna to wanna to keep these factors in mind when you think about your needs and moving that bike. The total weight combined with those four inch tires is also gonna limit your options for bike racks. So make sure that you think about that and you choose a rack that will accept both the weight and the total width of the tire. The second con for the bike is that the suspension fork from Zoom is clunky and I found that it offered little true suspension. So I was really not impressed with this fork and I would have been great to see something like an air suspension fork rather than this coil suspension fork. I know for the price, it's a lot to ask for, but still, the coil fork from Zoom, it felt clunky and unresponsive. I found that it kept on getting stuck halfway through the travel, and then when it was unweighted, it would clunk back out to full travel again. So it was really disconcerting. And while it was offering some assistance, the noises combined with that sticky, clunky travel, they just weren't a plush experience. And next for the cons, we had wide cornering at speed and some limited maneuverability in tight spaces. So I will praise Aventon, they make no claim that this is a mountain bike or a goat, and rather it's a fun and capable adventure e-bike for a variety of terrain. So the description really rings true, so long as the places that you are riding are wider than tight single track. The heavy frame with no rear suspension and a rough front fork also suffers on rooty or bumpy terrain. So the bike is powerful and it's comfortable to pedal, but the large tires and overall weight that give it a great sense of stability at speed also come into play in tight spaces and when you're cornering. So the bike corners as you would expect with a four inch tire. It corners in a wide arcing path. So carving is also quite slow. So you're not gonna be making any sharp turns on this bike and in tight areas, the total weight can make it a challenge because if you cannot sufficiently maintain speed, then you're not gonna be able to really maneuver effectively. Over bumps, roots, and rocks, the bike is not wonderful as well. A proper low tire pressure can assist, but lacking suspension and a torque sensor, the bike bumps and pushes through rough terrain in a less than comfortable manner. So you can really feel the total weight of 73 pounds in the rough stuff. So keep the bike out in the open and let the 28 mile per hour top speed take care of the work for you here. Okay. Here we go, we're taking off on our first range test and here we are off to a great start. The bike is powerful and riding it at 28 miles per hour is a blast. It's so responsive. So let's put some miles on and talk about what the bike does best, okay? I would place the adventure firmly into the recreational and light duty commuter e-bike category. As a light commuter, for its heavy weight rather than because it's lacking any range or ability. It really does excel at powering you across a variety of terrain. And it's a quick bike with a 28 mile per hour top speed limit. 
but its large size and tires make it a little less appealing to commuters who may be looking for something that's going to be more maneuverable both on and off the bike with a smaller tire and a lighter build. Don't get me wrong though, with an impressive range and a long ride comfort make it really easy to use for a commuter with front racks and rear racks so you could definitely commute with this bike. The bike is well built and it's a fat tire adventure bike. It's suited to exploring a variety of terrain and it's not an e-mountain bike. While it can make it down some smooth single track and some tight bumpy trails, they're gonna really take away from the riding experience quickly. So it's gonna be better if you stick to wider single track or wide double track and leave the rough stuff to a bike with less weight and better suspension overall. So who should buy this bike? This bike is really made for the recreation nation. And it's a great mix up for those who wanna get up riding and go out no matter what kind of terrain they might find. It's gonna do just as well on pavement in the city as it will off-road at the campsite and on your local trails. So really, it's a do-it-all bike that I can see a ton of different recreational riders loving. After using it as a commuter, I was also impressed. It's got the battery capacity to run you for 22 miles at 28 miles an hour and you can go much further at lower speeds. It's really quite comfortable to ride, so you can really zip over those long distances, and it was quite comfortable and pleasant to power you up while you were zipping around with traffic because of that total speed. The overall weight might deter some commuters who might need to have a smaller and less weighty bike to move around inside of those tight spaces, but if you have some good storage options at either end of your commute, you could definitely use this bike to have fun on the weekend and get to work during the weekday. So what are some reasons to look elsewhere with this bike? The primary one is the fact that this is a large, heavy bike. So those that are wanting smaller tires and lighter overall weight will definitely want to look elsewhere. Now likewise, those that are looking for something more dedicated, either to on-road riding or to off-road riding, may wanna look at a full suspension bike or something that's more mountain bike minded for a build, or if you're looking at something for specific on-road use, you might want something that's more commuter specific, something that's lighter and more maneuverable in tight urban spaces. Or really you could just outfit this thing with racks and get that class three commute on. So let's go and move on to the frame and geometry. The Aventon is a nicely designed bike and at its core is this great frame. It's really got a clean look with a very modern looking geo. Now the battery is integrated just beautifully into the bike and I love that it comes out to the side. It's really the easiest battery to change. The top tube has this nice steep slope and that's giving us a nice lower standover height. And the reach on this bike is also very pleasant. The riding position is this mix where you're in kind of a slightly sloped over position. So it's a more athletic position than a straight backed bike, but it's also great for getting some power to the pedals or maneuvering. And then it's still really easy to go sit up if you're pedaling for some long extended period of time. So it's really quite comfortable. Now it's featuring a sturdy aluminum frame. It's really built to last, but that built to last comes with a total weight of about 73 pounds. So it's pretty heavy overall, but it's really packed with some great features like that battery placement, the internal cable routing, and some really nice fenders and attachment points for accessories. So check out the placement of this rear brake light on the back. It's integrated into the left seat stay and it's in the perfect position for driver visibility. So functionality and fine looking assets, this is really a great package from the get go. So that frame style really comes into play on these longer rides and I really found myself enjoying the ride position as I hit about the 10 mile mark on our test ride. I was zipping along at 28 miles an hour when suddenly, what's that hissing sound? Oh damn, the back end started swerving out and started to feel very wrong. So I skidded to a stop and I found that the culprit was that our rear tire was flat. You never know what's gonna happen on these ride tests. So our first range test was a little bit of a bunk and we're gonna to have to go back to the shop and fix up that bike tire. So while we're fixing up that rear tire, let's take a look at the motor that was powering us along so well and see what this bike has going for it. 
Powering the adventure, we have the Buffung 750 watt rear hub motor. Now we see this unit on a lot of the fat tire e-bikes and it's a well configured motor with a rated output of 750 watts and a max torque of 80 Newton meters. That translates into plenty of power at the wheels and Aventon has really maximized this with a well-tuned controller on this bike. It offers the ability to choose a speed limit via the app and the bike is easily set as a class two at 20 miles per hour or as a class three at 28 miles an hour. So the five pedal assist settings are well staged and they offer you some good application of torque as well as changing the top speed. So the bike is really comfortable to ride in traffic or pedestrian areas at its lower settings. And with the brake cutoff switches, you can easily cut off power as you need to. So as soon as you get out on the open road, speeding up to 28 miles per hour is fast and really quite smooth, and the motor pulls away quite quickly. The bike is exhilarating and easy to control, and ramping up to speed and power is very smooth, but it's in a powerful way, so it's very pleasant when you're gonna take off and keep up with traffic while you're commuting. The motor also maintains 28 miles per hour really well, so it's not making you work hard to keep up with that speed and power. And when you're faced with a hill, it's really no problem as the bike can easily climb even steep slopes with a minimal decrease to its top speed. So there's really no complaints about the motor. It's powerful and well paired with the controller. Well, we got the tire fixed with a new tube and we're back on the road for round two of our range test. So this time the round went without a hitch and gliding through the gates back at the house, I was very happy to report that the bike had exceeded expectations and managed to pump out a great range test. So hang tight for those numbers in the battery section coming up in just a minute, but let's move on to the cockpit and control. So adventure riders are greeted by a well laid out cockpit. You've got 680 millimeter riser bars, which are adorned with some Tektro aluminum levers and some nice Aventon branded lock on grips. You've also got Shimano shifters and a very nice display and control pad combo. Power can also be applied with this thumb switch throttle if you're not using the pedal assist. And then you've got this full color LCD backlit display, which is just great to use. It's combined with a very ergonomic control pad and it's a simple and highly functional combo. It's five button layout is clear with dedicated buttons for functions like the light and changing the information on the display. And then it also has this integrated app which makes the display even better, allowing you to see all the same info and access all the control and functions from your own device that you can from the actual display on the unit. It's really pleasant to use and look at the cockpit. So it's a really a definite win in my opinion. And here is the moment that we've been waiting for. We're coming up on the first range test and it went so well. We're gonna give you those results coming up soon that we decided we could take it on a monster one, almost 50 miles. Well, time's ticking and I would need to do this one at entirely 16 miles per hour. So it's gonna be a really long commute. We better get pedaling and see what the adventure is made of. And while we're getting that pedal going on, let's move on to the battery stats and get you the stats on that range test because it's an impressive one for this. So looking at the battery on this model, we have a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. So that's 720 watt hours. And the battery is well paired with the 750 watt motor. So it's capable of running the bike at approximately 28 miles an hour for a little over an hour or long enough to cover almost 22 miles at that top speed. Take that down to assist level two and the battery will power you for over 47 miles. It's a great range that's made even more impressive by the fact that this actually beats the specs that were set out by the companies. It was great to see that some of these real world testing numbers right from the company website were actually true. And this was a test that the bike beat with flying colors. So it gives me a lot more faith in some of the other specs that the company is putting out. So we know that the range test was a success and the bike kills it. But really, am I gonna actually make it home? This range test is just about as far as you can possibly go. It was pushing it 
trying to get all the way to 50 miles. So let's stick around as we finish off the specs and see if I actually make it back to the house or if 47.78 miles is just not enough. So let's move on to the charger and battery removal while we see if I can pedal all the way home. Looking at the charger, battery removal and keys next. So the way that the battery is installed and removed is really truly unique and it's a feature that I loved about the adventure. So rather than coming out of the bottom of the down tube like we've seen on so many other models, the battery is actually installed and removed from the side. And this just makes it so easy as you don't have to worry about the fork and the fender getting in the way and it's just much nicer. So both the battery and the key are removed and utilized from the same side, so it's just so easy. The charger is also a nice upgrade, sporting a 48 volt, three amp charger. It's a three amp supply, so it can be considered a fast charger. And when you're normally looking at a two amp supply, it's gonna be a little faster. It'll fully charge the battery in about four to five hours. Now moving on to the drivetrain. We're seeing a pretty typical gear range on the bike. We've got a 12 to 32 tooth rear cassette combined with a 46 tooth front chain ring. And the drivetrain does sport a modest upgrade over some of the other models in the form that we have an eight speed Shimano Asira group set. So this is better than the seven speed that we'd normally be seeing on more budget minded builds. And overall, the drivetrain is good on the bike. It offers some pretty crisp shifting and that additional gear is definitely pleasant because I found that I would need to move through my gears pretty frequently when I'm coming to a stop and when I'm traveling in stop and go traffic as the bike requires a little more torque to get moving from a dead stop just because of the total weight of the unit. So I really enjoyed the shifting on this bike and I think that it's pretty typical, nothing really special what we would normally see on these bikes, but you're getting a little bit of an upgrade with that eight speed Asira, so that's nice to see. Let's look at the brakes. We've got the Tektro HD E350, which are a dual piston brake, and they really complement the fast brake. They provide reliable stopping power in a lot of different conditions, and I found that the levers had a pretty pleasant hand feel that offered some good brake modulation, so I felt nice and controlled. And now the bike's adventurous quality definitely calls for a hydraulic brake, and Tektro is a very reliable name, so it was nice to see those on here. The 180 millimeter rotors are well chosen and it's really the standard I think we should see when we've got a heavy bike like this that's meant for adventure. So we're seeing a good package here but it's nothing overly special and it's what I think we should see on all bikes of this weight and classification. Moving on to the wheels and the tires. We've got a set of 26 inch wheels with the Kenda Crusader rubber connecting you to the ground. It's a suitable tire choice for the bike and the tire is not the most aggressive, but it's a good mix for all surfaces. And I found that it offered performance that matched the bike's capabilities. It also features puncture protection, probably ideal for something like a thorn, but not enough for the two inch nail that got in our tire while we were out on a ride. But still with a fresh tube, the tires performed just fine on mixed off-road terrain. So they were really comfortable over sand, gravel, pavement, and dirt. And the large four inch tires provided some good cushioning at the right tire pressure. The large tire is a stable base and it's quite comfortable to ride on the road for an extended period. With the larger size, they make for some wide turns at speed, and the bike also can be a little bit of a you know slow cruiser, but it does feature some great fenders, and I think that those fenders were really nice for keeping road debris off me. Actually, here's a great clip of those fenders keeping some of the rain off me, but I'm just getting absolutely soaked while I'm out testing this bike, and it's a good example of what it can be like to be out testing these bikes sometimes. So you never know what's gonna happen on a 50 mile ride. And I'm not gonna lie, I wanted to pack it in here when I was getting just absolutely soaked by this rain. And I was glad that I had my waterproof gear on, but I had to ride so much further that by the time I finished this range test, I was actually totally dry and we were back to a nice sunny day. I was having to take the jacket off again. So that's some of the things we can experience on these rides. You never know what's gonna happen. So let's take a look at the safety features on the Aventon Adventure. So the Adventure features some brake 
cutoff switchers. Now this is nice, it's on each lever and we normally see this on e-brakes. It's really nice and it cuts off the motor quickly. We've also got some great integrated lights. They're a nice secondary safety feature with a really bright front light and a nicely integrated rear brake light. The brake light is located on the left seat stay, so it's a great spot so traffic can see you as you're riding down that bike lane. And the bike also features reflectors on the front and the rear wheel spokes like we'd normally see. So we've also got on this bike your pretty standard single-sided kickstand, but it's a little different on this bike in the fact that we're seeing that Aventon has really gone the extra mile with this for branding purposes. They've been able to customize the shape and adding not only one, but two logos to the kickstand. So stuff like this has no performance value whatsoever, but it does add, you know, a little bit to the overall aesthetic of the bike and having all the details buttoned up like this really makes you feel like the rig is a premium one. So it's not bad in any way, shape or form. So let's move on to the contact points here too. And this is another one. So easily overlooked on many builds. I was a big fan of the contact points that Aventon has chosen on this bike. So starting with a very nice set of lock-on rubber grips. These are the style of grip you would see on a mountain bike. They're quite comfortable and they offer great traction on the hands. The Aventon branding is a nice secondary touch on this. I was happy to see no ergonomic flares, no faux leather stitching or any of that on the cockpit of the Adventure. So it was great to see a nice functional set of grips. And as we moved onto the seat, it was another chance for them to do a great branding opportunity. And this is a custom Aventon branded seat that's made by Velo. So it's reasonably comfortable on the 48 mile range test. I was ready to run away from it, but for the first 20 miles, it was pretty good. So it's a pretty comfortable seat. I'm not gonna complain. It's miles better than some of the stock options that I've seen on other bikes. So it's gonna get you out there and you're gonna be comfortable on that right away. So last, let's take a look at the pedals. And I was so accustomed to seeing a set of Welgo pedals gracing almost every bike build that I was actually shocked to see a different shape when I first looked here. So we've got a set of the Femen platform pedals they're a fine grip they worked really well for me they have a shape to them that kind of matches the design of the bike and i found that the pegs were grippy enough that i really had no issues whatsoever so moving on to the accessories aventon really offers a nice range of additional branded accessories that you can add onto the bike so some of the things that you can get here include stuff like a front and rear rack you can get extra batteries and battery covers if you happen to scratch that up or lose that or break it. You can get phone mounts and accessories, suspension seat posts, tire inflators, and a bunch of other cool accessories. So definitely go and check some of those out on the Aventon website. Adventure is really in the name and it's lived up to it. So it's easy to love this bike and it's really a feeling that lasts with the Aventon Adventure. So I was really happy that the comments that I heard from other users before I used this bike really rang true for me. The bike features everything that you'd be looking for from a recreational standpoint and it has a build and features that hold a true feeling of quality. So I can see how it would draw the eye in an e-bike showroom. I had plenty of fun riding the adventure and I was just impressed with its abilities both on and off road. So if you're looking for a fat tire e-bike to get out riding in a variety of terrain, this could definitely be the bike for you. With an impressive ability and range, I sure was happy to zip in the gates and get back from a massive 48 mile ride. So I was in the saddle with the Aventon Adventure for over three and a half hours, and I knew it had the capability to go the distance. So this is one recreational bike that definitely lives up to the brand hype, and it was great to see. Is this bike for you? You can check out the detailed specs at bikeride.com and see user and expert reviews. And you can also check out other great e-bikes and see them rated to find your perfect match. So if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe so we can bring you the latest e-bike reviews and news. 
As always, I'm Scott with BikeRide.com and I want to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the ride.